Hello, hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to another Minecraft Funny tutorial for version 1.19. In this tutorial, we are going to be covering advanced blocks. So, as you remember in the last tutorial, we covered advanced items, and essentially we went over what an advanced item is, and we came to the conclusion that an advanced item is simply just an item that can do more than just an item, than a normal item. And advanced blocks are exactly the same. So all we're going to be doing is creating a block that has a little more functionality than a normal block. So let's just get started. Let's come into our block init as usual. And let's go ahead and create a block. So registry objects and I'm going to call my class advanced block, but obviously don't call yours advanced block. Call it whatever your block is. And as long as you have a good name, all will be good. Now, all we need to put in here is, as usual, the basic, basic stuff. So we just want a new advanced block. And that will just take in the block behavior dot properties. And I'm going to copy mine from box.dirt just to save me a little bit of time. And then we just need the item properties as usual. Sorry, mod dot tab. There we go. Let's new line this. Let's plonk it there. And one extra thing I'm going to do with my block is I'm going to tell it that it should randomly tick. You only need that if you know your block is going to randomly tick. If your block is not going to randomly tick then obviously don't add that property but for this tutorial mine is going to. So from there we can go ahead and create this class. Let's come into our main package and create a new package called dot blocks. Now inside of here we're going to create a new class and this will be our advanced block. This will extend block. Okay now from there we can go ahead and do the normal stuff. So first of all obviously we have to add the constructor and we'll rename this to properties in a future tutorial, we won't have to do that as we'll be switching mappings. But for now, uh, we will still have to do that. So, the same with items. There are a bunch of methods in the block class, and I can't go over all of them. This tutorial would be very long if I did. However, the main ones, which you're probably going to want, we have use. So this is when your block is right-clicked. It may or may not be with an item. You also have, um, there is an entity method. I actually kind of got the name. IntelliJ is not giving me the best suggestions here. Here we go. So you have entity inside. You have update entity after full on. So if that's if an entity falls on it, entity inside is just if an entity collides with it, um, I believe, unless there is an actual collision method. There is not. And yeah, I mean, you can look through all of the different methods that you may want. Uh, they are all in here. And yeah, as I was saying, there are tons of them. And we are going to be using two of them for this tutorial. So we are going to be using this use method. Now to save me some time, I'm just going to copy these parameters across rather than going through and renaming all of those. That will just save me a few seconds. And then we're also going to override random tick. And this method will be called at a random tick rate. And that is now only be called because I'm adding my random ticks method here. Now, one thing I would like to mention about the block class is there is a tick method. However, 
this does not tick every tick. This only ticks on scheduled ticks. And scheduled ticks do not normally happen. You have to manually schedule a tick. So if you think that your block is just going to tick every tick using this method, it won't. Um, that is that is a thing to note, as I think that messes up quite a few people. If you do want a block that ticks, then you will need a block entity, which we will be covering hopefully very soon. We'll have to see exactly when that happens. Um, but yeah. Okay, for now, let's once again, uh, I'm just going to copy these parameters across, save me a little bit of time. And let's get started with the use method. So what I want to happen when I right click this block is I want it to bone meal all the blocks around it that it can bone meal. Okay, just a very simple functionality. So the first thing I'm going to need to do for this is I'm just gonna need to check that it is server side. And I do that by asking, uh, is it client side? And if it's not client side, then we'll continue. From there, um, I'm going to want to call a function for this, um, which I'm going to call bone meal blocks. And I know for a fact that's going to need the level, and I know it's going to need the current pos. And other than that, we can just return whatever we need to return in here. So I'm going to return interaction result. And because I'm checking whether or not it's client side, I'm going to return a sided success with the level dot is client side as the boolean. If you don't understand all of that, don't worry. You can just return whatever you need to return for yours. Um, it's going to be different for everyone. I can't, I can't do this perfectly for every single circumstance of what yours might be. In most general cases, you're just going to probably return success here um, if it succeeded or not. And in a lot of circumstances, you're probably not going to need this client side check either. But in my circumstance, I know for a fact that to bone meal a block, it has to be ran server side. Okay, other than that, we can go ahead and create my bone meal blocks method. And this will have to be private static void bone meal blocks. Now, this is actually going to need a server level and then the block pos. And I'm just going to cast this here. So in this method, I'm just going to copy across some code that I have already written um, as this shouldn't be relevant to you anyways. And I have to go through and import all of these manually, don't I? Unless there is a hotkey to do this. There probably is. Um, I'm not too familiar with IntelliJ at this current moment on the hotkeys. So that is something I will definitely still be learning over time. There probably is one that I'm definitely not aware of, but it is how it is. So that is my bone meal blocks method. I'll quickly run through what it does. So it has a radius that we define up here. I set the default radius to one since we want it to start one block away. We don't want to try and bone mill the actual block itself. And then while this radius is less than 10, so we have a maximum of 10 blocks out, we loop through each direction and we grab a position relative to that direction and this current radius. Then we grab the block state at that position and then we just check if the block of that block state is a bone mealable block. If it is, then we just grab this bone mealable variable using the pattern matching. And I just do 10 attempts of trying to perform the bone meal at that new position. And then I just create some particles there uh, just to show me exactly where it's tried to bone meal. After that whole direction loop has happened, that means it has finally gone one block out in all directions. 
So we can now increment the radius and it will come back to here and repeat until this radius is 10 or above. From there, uh, we can now go ahead and do the random tick method. So in random tick, I want to do something random, um, very, very random, uh, just as random as bone mealing. And what I want to do is simply just spawn some particles in a sphere above the block. It's pretty simple. Um, so let's just do that. All I need to do for this is I need to first check that the level is not client side, which we know it shouldn't be because it is a server level, but um, actually, yeah, it is a server level. There's no point in me doing that. Um, and then all I want to do in here, just a very simple for loop, um, int uh, attempt is equal zero, attempt is less than, uh, no, I'll just call it i. It's, it's just easier. I is less than, I'll do 100, 1000 even. I plus plus. And all I want to do in here is first get the position that the particle should be at. So particle pos is equal. And I'm going to create a method for this. So I'm going to call this random point on sphere. And that will take the position and I'm going to put that 20 blocks upwards and I also need to make sure I offset it so that it is centered correctly because by default it will be at the corner and then we just need a radius I'm going to say 10 blocks for the radius and that's also going to need the random from there all we can do is level send particles and we can pass whatever the particle type is. For me, I'm going to use the composter. Then I'm going to grab the particle pos dot x particle pos dot y particle pos dot z. Then we'll say the count is one. We will say zero, which is the uh, I actually don't recall what that is, but I know it needs to be a zero. <laughs> That's all I remember. Um, then we'll just do zero, 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 which is the essentially speed that it will be. I actually can't for the live me remember what that zero is. Um, let's have a look. So it's the max speed. There you go, max speed. Yeah, and then these are the um, sort of max distances yeah right of course so max speed we don't want any speed because we just want it to be stationary particles and uh, yeah from there we just create this method I'm not going to do that in this tutorial I'm just going to copy paste it in again because this is not really uh, relevant per se uh, it just does some simple maths to get the random point on a sphere and that's pretty much it well I mean that is it all we need to do now is come back into our block in it and import the class and that should be it I've already done all of the JSONs I've already done the texture just to save me a little bit of time here and let's just run the game so now that we are in the game we can go ahead in our tutorial tab we can grab our advanced block out and if i place it down every random tick which is actually uh, not that common we should see some particles spawning up here to make it a little bit more oh there they are but to make it a little bit more common um, we can always just set the random tick speed to 500. And
So if you guys did find this tutorial useful, then please do be sure to smash your face into that like button and subscribe. If you really enjoyed or really found it useful, then please do be sure to share it as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Good bye. Coming up on Cartoon Network. These